yo, to God, unbelievers are considered to be dogs. Why? Look at Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. It says, As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. See, in the scriptures, a fool is considered to be somebody who says there is no God. They're in a world filled with creation that is clearly not from man. We create. And when we create, we create with such an intelligence that you have to trace it back to somebody, right? So when we look at the air, which serves a purpose, the ground, which serves, which serves a purpose, the tree serves a purpose, what we create also serves a purpose. So we know that when we make things like a car that serves a purpose, it is you can trace it back to a human being with intelligence who created this thing. So we know that there's someone who exists behind this creation. So when we look at the animals and the trees, everything that is beyond the scope of our creative ability, we know that someone is also responsible for the creation of these things because there is sense behind it. There is intelligence behind it. It all serves a purpose. Now... When a fool exists in the midst of all these things and can come to a conclusion that there is no God, they are thus a fool. So in Proverbs 26, 11, he says, a dog returns to his vomit. So a fool repeats his folly. Um, before I go more into that, I want to go to Revelation chapter 22. Verse 12, Jesus Christ speaking. He says, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, which means beginning and the end of Greek alphabetical letters. The first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who washed their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city, the New Jerusalem. Humongous. Outside, outside of the city or the new heaven and the new earth or outside of heaven are the dogs. And we know what is intended when we hear God say dogs. So he explains it. Outside are the dogs. Those who practice magic arts, who try to be in tune with false, well, not necessarily false, but rather fallen angels, you know, like palm readers, the crystal ball gazers, the, um, the readers of the stars, and those types of situations where it's not even real. You know, you, you, there's nothing in the crystal ball. There's nothing in the scar, in the stars. You know, there's nothing in anyone's palms. When you pay attention to those things, you're only invoking devils. That's all you're doing. Whenever you give attention to any inanimate object, creature, or anything that's created by the hands of God, a devil is going to take its position, and you're going to assume that there's some sort of power in, you know, um, um, moon, uh, mood stones or you know, crystals or, you know, rivers and fishes and birds and whatever. All those things are creation from God. There is nothing in those things. So when you do those, when you follow those magic arts, like, you know, we have movies like The Craft and TV shows like Charmed and those types of things, you're only being in tune, not with the, um, the Holy Spirit of God, but you're in tune with the unholy spirit of the devil and the fallen angels. So outside of heaven are dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. That's lies. Everyone who loves and they practice lies. So unbelievers are considered to be dogs. 
and there are false believers who are also considered to be dogs because they first hear the word of God and they participate in the activities of what the church um, practices. They, they go to church, they go to Bible studies, all of these things. These, are what, these people are what you call tares. They're what you call goats. You know, these people are those who have built their house. It looks so good, but it's built upon sand, you know. And they will be shown for who they are at the proper time. Because eventually, what is missing from them, it looks like they're committed externally, but inwardly, they're not satisfied. They're like a Judas. You know, they've been around from the beginning. They go here, they go there, they do this, they do that. But inwardly, they're not really satisfied with the Christian life or Christ per se. So like a dog who, you know, vomits his food out and he goes and or she goes and roams around and then ends up getting hungry. And instead of looking for fresh food, they end up roaming back to their vomit and eat it back up. So someone who leaves the world and they come to Jesus Christ to follow Christ. See, and the thing is, Jesus is not, he's not a fool. You can't deceive him. He did say, all those who desire to follow, follow him must first deny themselves, pick up the cross, and follow him daily. And he also warned them in saying that, he also warned people by telling them um, that they must count the cost. So you can't just jump in. You have to realize what you're doing before you do it because it's going to cost you. You're going to realize, you have to realize that this thing comes with sacrifice. If you're not willing to sacrifice, if you're not willing to die to the world, die to your desires, die to your sinful practices, die to your rejection of God, die to this fallen world, then you can't live in life. Jesus Christ is life. You can't be in the ark. You can't be in Christ and survive the storm that's coming. You can't do it. And later on, we're gonna. I'm going to talk more about, you know, uh, the Mario Lopez situation, the shooting situation and all, and what it all means biblically and where we're all headed so keep watch and pray jesus christ will be glorified christ is coming soon be prepared grace and peace